Now on to the unique equipment for job specific syndicates and nuclear operatives. I'm considering nuclear operative syndicate agents because, well, they are referred to as syndicate agents, just they have a more specific goal and work as a team. Nuclear operatives in the ammo tab, they have no unique weapons, no unique individual weapon purchases. And in the ammo tab, everything's the same except they can buy magazines for the C20. It is just a 30 round magazine compatible with the C20, costs three telecrystals, pretty simple. Under the explosives tab, they feature one unique purchase, which is the Grenadier chest rig. When you purchase it, it looks just like the normal chest rig, but this one has specific items inside. Inside is four explosive grenades, two syndicate mini bombs, two EMP grenades. For only costing 12 telecrystals, you will save a lot of money buying this if you plan on using these grenades. I mean, four explosive grenades alone is 16 TC. Two EMPs is 4 TC, and two mini bombs is 12 TC, so it's a ton of savings. Under bundles, they feature three unique purchases. There's the ammo bundle, which costs 15 telecrystals. Inside is a duffel bag with four C20 magazines, four Bulldog magazines, and two L6 Solve magazines. This is a fantastic purchase, and probably the most effective purchase in the entire Nuki arsenal. You get a ridiculous amount of ammo. However, you have to diversify with your group, because if you don't diversify, well, uh, you're going to waste ammo, which will waste telecrystals, obviously. But this is an extraordinarily good purchase if you want to coordinate how much firepower you want. The, the amount of bulldog ammo in this alone is enough to kill a quarter of a station if you're just placing your shots well. The medical bundle's 20 telecrystal purchase. All you need to get your comrades back in the fight contains a combat med kit, defib, and three combat medipens. Remember... The combat medipins have Omnizine and Tranacid in them to stop bleeding. Inside, there is also a defib and a combat medical kit. And this is obviously a really good purchase for the agent, potentially, because uh, the defib will allow you to resurrect a Nuki who has fallen. Um, and the combat medical kit, again, has a ton of good medicine in it. So for an agent that doesn't want to make too much medicine and like wants to speed up how fast you're going... Uh, it's a great purchase. Also, I mean, you can't make Omnizine, so that's also another big purchase. And the 40 large telecrystal purchase, the Syndicate Zombie Bundle, all in one kit for unleashing the undead upon a station. Comes in a big duffel bag. Inside, there is a python, 60 extra shots of incendiary, incendiary ammo. Incendiary ammo is incredibly powerful. It does heat, shock, cold, and caustic, which none of these bottom ones are getting resisted. And the thing is, is it also sets people on fire, so incredibly powerful. It comes with Ambazol, which can stop, or which can cure being infected. Ambazol Plus, which is a vaccine, meaning you can never get infected. And Romerol, which is how you start the virus. Uh, a common strategy with this is a Nuki will infect themselves and run onto the station and try to kill as many people as they can. And then once they die, they will turn and they will try to infect all the dead people. That's a pretty common strategy. Um, it comes with uh, 15 units. So I have seen more than one Nuki use this. I've also seen Nuki's stealth board kill somebody and then inject them as their crit to turn them into a zombie. So there is a bunch of different plays you can do here. They have a micro bomb implant, which explode on death or manual activation with this implant destroys the body with all the equipment. Only costs two telecrystals. If I inject myself with it and I come out here, for example, You'll have an action on the side to allow you to explode yourself instantaneously. And it does indeed give you, and you will leave no equipment behind. The microbomb implant is almost a must purchase if you're doing tactics that involve splitting off into smaller groups or doing stealth. This way, if you get captured and they, you're going to go crit, you can activate it yourself and give yourself to guarantee that the enemies do not get a hold of your equipment. And it's also good, though, because if you die and somebody is like beating you to death, you'll explode and take them out with you. The much more powerful macro bomb implanter costs 20 telecrystals, and you can't have it with a micro bomb. The, ma the macro bomb is different, though. The macro bomb can't be activated uh, on its own. You must die. So if I were to just to make this quick, I can ghost real quick, and it will start a 10-second countdown. And once that countdown is done, it is a massive explosion and you can't see the results of the spacing too easily because it's it, i did it on a planet tile but it will 
absolutely space a massive area and kill anyone. And again, your equipment is gone if you die with a macro bomb. Very important. Also in the implants category is a box of death rattle implants. Box containing enough death rattle implants for the whole squad relays a message containing your position when you go in critical or die. So inside there are five, or inside there are um, six death rattle injectors and six GPSs. Even though a team only goes up to five, you can just use it for reinforcement. You inject yourself and I, well, let's just make things simple. I will, I will crit myself real quick. As soon as they go in critical, it will inform everyone else that the commander, or whoever it is, in this case Commander Delta, life signs are critical, and media assist is required, and there will be an updated message for when they die. It's a very cheap purchase, and I see it uh, purchased pretty often due to the fact that it's cheap, and it gives you much needed information. Next up is the explosive banana peel. Only the clown can purchase this, it costs two telecrystals, they will burst into laughter when they slip on it. So if I purchase it, it'll go directly into the hand as a banana. If you press Z, you'll not eat the banana, but you'll peel it. If you put it on the ground and you slip on it, it'll explode and do a minor amount of damage. The Hollow Clown Kit is a 12 telecrystal purchase available only to the clown. A joint venture between Cybersun and Haunt Company contains an injector that hosts a sentient metaphysical clown made of hard light which resides in the user's body when not active. A hollow clown has pockets to store things, a hard light in hand to manipulate the environment with, and is immune to hazardous environments while being resistant to direct trauma but shares damage it takes with its user. It comes in this box, and inside there's a rubber hammer, a hollow clown figurine, and the injector. And just like the hollow parasite injector, it takes some time to actually inject, so you don't want to just pop this out and inject it instantly. And somebody must take over the ghost role for it to have any effect. The Hollow Clown, like the Hollow Parasite, can't go far from its user. But it is very fast. It punches just like a Guardian. However, it has two pocket slots, and it has a hand slot. Just like a Clown, it can't use guns. But it can use melee weapons, and since it can go around corners and stuff and fight for you, it's actually pretty capable in a lot of certain situations. You can literally have your Hollow Clown guard you while you like dismantle something they can hold loot for you and just hide it there's a lot of usages for well basically a person that's hidden inside you next up is the hot potato it is available to the chef botanist clown and mime cost four telecrystals once activated this time bomb can't be dropped only passes someone else so if i take it press z i can't drop it or anything but if i just turn on harm and hit somebody with it it'll say pass the hot potato and it actually does, it was updated to do constant damage as long as you have the hot potato. And in order to get rid of it, you just have to hit it, somebody, uh, to give it back. Um, in this case, I didn't get the potato. Uh, I'm guessing because it's somehow, like, stuck to my entity. What it's supposed to do, it's supposed to go in your hands and explode if you can't give it, get rid of it and give it to somebody else. And, uh... It keeps burning you constantly if you don't get rid of it, so there's a good chance you'll go crit if you can't find anyone before it explodes. But for whatever reason, it bugged. It might be an offline issue. I haven't seen it bug in a real match, but I think you'll get the picture, and I'll show the explosion. Uh, well, when it happens. And even while you're in crit, it can't give you, so that's something worth considering. Also, I think the timer lasts 5 minutes. I'm not 100% sure. Up next is the Proximity Mine. It is only available to janitors. It costs 4 telecrystals. A mine disguised as a wet floor sign. And that's literally all it is. It's a wet floor sign. You step on it. It explodes. It does quite a lot of damage. It will not kill a full health person. But for only being 4 telecrystals, that's a pretty nasty surprise. Up next is a Necronomicon. An unholy book capable of summoning a demonic familiar. There's actually two ways of getting this. You don't have to be a chaplain. Another solution is you can emag it out of a piety vendor, and that's another way to get the book. So the way the book works is you pick it up, and you press C. On the left side of your screen, it'll be a summon familiar option. And what that does is it opens up a ghost role for somebody to take a... It opens up a role for somebody to take a Cerberus. Cerberus is basically a dog from hell. It cannot communicate with you, but it will obey you and well they should obey you and it does quite a bit of melee damage it's fairly tanky and has interesting resistances it's a pretty strong companion for only four telecrystals or i guess the eight if you buy the emag and you can manage to get somebody to uh group up with you but it is quite interesting 
Another purchase available only to the Chaplain is the Holy Hand Grenade. It costs 20 Telecrystals. O Lord, bless thy... O Lord, bless this thy hand grenade, that with it thou mayest blow thine enemies to tiny bits in thy mercy. It glows extremely bright. It costs all of your telecrystals. If you press Z, you'll hear the iconic sound. And, uh, yeah, it does a massive amount of damage. Up next is a packet of gap fruit seeds. It is available only to botanists for six telecrystals. And who says guns don't grow on trees? You buy it, and you'll get a packet of gap fruit seeds. These take an extraordinarily long time to grow, but there is definitely techniques that botanists can use to make a lot of them. Uh, I've seen hundreds of pythons made. So when you get the gap fruit and you eat it, it takes two bites. Out will pop a python that comes full of ammo. And the python damage is 35 piercing. You don't get the armor piercing ones, though, out of the... Gap fruit, but the python shoots really quick and does 35 damage. So it's a pretty formidable gun to grow literally an infinite amount of. It is a limitless potential telecrystal purchase and very interesting. It, up next is the chimp hand cannon upgrade chip for four telecrystals. is available to all of science, so if the research director ever gets re-added as a syndicate agent or roboticists get added, they'll be able to purchase it too. Insert the chip into a standard chimp hand cannon to allow it to fire mega particles. They inflict severe burns and cause anomalies to go super critical. If you purchase it, and you just left-click an ape, it will turn it into an experimental chimp hand cannon. And if you right-click it, and you select type to Omega, which is the unique particle, it does 20 heat damage a shot, and it doesn't shoot super fast, but it's still a lot of damage. But if you were to mag dump, or battery dump, an anomaly with it, you will cause it to go critical very, very quickly. And for only four telecrystals, that's a pretty scary purchase. Up next is a Syndicate Sponge Box, seven telecrystal purchase. It is available to the Zookeeper Scientist, Senior Researcher, Research Director, and Chef. It is a box containing six Syndicate Sponges disguised as monkey cubes. These cubes turn into a variety of angry wildlife after coming in contact with water. So inside, yes, it literally says monkey cubes. But if you were to get something like a fire extinguisher and spray it after you open the, the monkey cube, a bunch of different mobs pop out, and in this case it was a stick, but it can be things from space bears to you name it. Up next is the rig boxing gloves. Cost 5 telecrystal, is available only to the passenger and boxer. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. When you purchase it, it looks just like blue boxing gloves. However, the more intuitive people might notice it does more damage in boxing gloves, and they're always blue. So if you press, if you pick it up and press E, it'll put it on your glove slot. The rigged boxing gloves are extraordinarily powerful. They let you attack pretty quickly, and it does good damage, especially since it's a glove slot. But they do a ton of stamina damage. They stam crit in only three hits, so you can pretty much beat anyone to death before they can even stand back up. Very, very powerful. And last but not least is the fake cap gun. Both the mime and the clown could buy it, except... It's practically useless on the clown because you can't shoot guns as a clown. Costs 9 telecrystals for your enemy. It uses both cap and magnum bullets. It comes loaded with magnum bullets. What makes the cap gun really good is that it has the full description of a cap gun. But inside, which I'll just empty it real quick, it does indeed come with 45 magnum armor piercing, which does 26 damage regardless of what the person is wearing. And it looks just like a cap gun, so anyone who like shift clicks you, they're just holding a cap gun. But as soon as you shoot somebody with it, they'll realize it's the real thing pretty quickly. And that is every single unique job uh, item in the game from both Nukies and all the different roles. I hope you learned something.